All right, pretending here back with another Honkai Star Up Guide, and today I'm here with the full in game build guide for Face Shout. It's been a few hours since she released, so today I'm going to be taking you over her kit and Eidolons, best light code options, best relic options, and stat recommendations on the relics, and then some team options and ideas. Yep, that's all I gotta say before I get to the video. Drop a like, drop a sub, hit the bell icon for more videos like this. Make sure to sub, or you will gain bad luck and lose your next 50 50s forever to come. And yep, let's get into it. So Fei Shao is a wind character following the path of Hunt. Her basic attack deals wind damage equal to 100% of Fei Shao's attack to a single target enemy. Her skill deals wind damage equal to 200% of Fei Shao's attack to a single target enemy, then immediately launches one extra instance of the town's follow-up attack against the target. And now for her crazy broken ultimate. Deals wind damage to a single target enemy up to 700% of Fei Shao's attack. During this time, can't ignore weakness type to reduce the target's toughness. When the target is not weakness broken, Fei Shao's weakness break efficiency increases by 100%. During this attack, Fei Shao first launches Bolt Sunder Blitz or War Axe Scabbard on the target for a total of 6 times. At the end, deals wind damage equal to 160% of Fei Shao's attack to the target. As you will notice, it does say you can launch two types of attacks in the ultimate, being Bolt Slitter Blitz or War Axe Skyward. The difference between these two is they do the same thing, but they are for different uses. For Bolt Slitter Blitz, you will use that if the target is weakness broken, because if they are weakness broken, Bolt Slitter Blitz damage multiplier increases by 30%. As for War Axe Skyward, you will be using War Axe Skyward if the target is not weakness broken. Because if the target is not weakness broken, War Axe Skyward damage multiplier increases by 30%. So once again, if they are weakness broken, you will be using Bolt Sunder Blitz. And if they aren't weakness broken, you will be using War Axe Skyward. For her talent, can activate ultimate when Flying Aureus reaches 6 points. And can accumulate up to 12 points. Face Shout gains 1 point of Flying Aureus for every 2 attacks by the ally targets. Face Shout's ultimate do not count towards the number. After Face Shout's teammates attack enemy targets, Face Shout immediately launches a follow-up attack against the primary target, dealing wind damage equal to 110% of Face Shout's if there is no primary target available to attack, Fisha attacks a single random enemy instead. This effect can only trigger once per turn and the trigger count resets at the start of Fisha's turn. When using this attack, increases damage dealt by this unit by 60% lasting for 2 turns. For the technique, after using the technique, enters the onrush state lasting for 20 seconds. While in onrush, pulls in enemies within a certain range and increases this unit's movement speed by 50%. After entering battle, gains 1 stack of flying aureus. While in Onrush, actively attacking will start the battle with all pulled enemies. After entering battle, deals wind damage equal to 200% of Feisha's attack to all enemies at the start of each wave. This damage is guaranteed to crit. If more than one enemy is pulled in, increases the multiplier of this damage by 100% for each additional enemy pulled in, up to a maximum of 1000%. For her bonus traces, her A2, when the battle starts, gains 3 points of Flying Aureus. At the start of a turn, if no follow-up attack was launched via a talent in the previous turn, then this counts as 1 toward the number of attacks required to gain Flying Aureus. Her A2, when using ultimate to deal damage to an enemy target, it is considered a follow-up attack. Follow-up attacks crit damage increases by 36%. And for her A6, when using skill, increases attack by 48%, lasting for 3 turns. Now for her Eidolons, her E1, after launching Bolt Slender Blitz or War Axe Skyward, additionally increases the ultimate damage dealt by Feisha by an amount equal to 10% of the original damage, stacking up to 5 times and lasting until the end of the ultimate action. This Eidolon is mainly just a damage increase. For E2, in the talent's effect, for every 1 instance of follow up attack launched by ally targets, Feisha gains 1 point of Flying Aureus, and this effect can only trigger up to 6 times per turn. This one is practically able to double her ultimate thanks to the fact that you're able to generate a lot of ultimate stacks which is her main source of damage, especially with follow up teams which is her best teams. Her E4, the toughness reduction from the talent follow up attack increases by 100% and when launched, increases this unit's speed by 8% for 2 turns. And her E6, increases the all type rest pen of ultimate damage dealt by Fei Shao by 20%. Talent's follow up attack damage is considered ultimate damage at the same time and its damage multiplier increases by 140%. So gaining an all type rest pen increase for the ultimate. On top of that the follow up attack you do is now considered ultimate damage as well and you also gain a big damage increase of 140%. Now taking a look over the best light cone options available for Fei Shao. Her best one is, you guessed it, her signature light cone. As it does increase the wear's crit rate by 15%, which crit rate is going to be very important on Fei Shao. And when you launch one follow-up attack, you gain a stack of Lumen Flux, stacking up to two times, and each stack of Lumen Flux 
enables the ultimate damage dealt by the wearer to ignore 27% of the target's defense. And when the turn ends, you remove a stack. So thanks to her pretty frequent follow-up attack, you are able to stack this up very easily. And as I already mentioned, crit rate is very important for Fisha as she has a lot of attacks, so getting the extra crit rate is very nice. And getting up to a 54% defense ignore at S1 is absolutely broken, as if you are not aware, defense ignore in this game is extremely good. So getting up to a 54% without any external help is insane just off a light cone alone, so this is going to be the best for her damage. Another really good one is actually Dr. Ratio Signature Light Cone, and this one is almost as good as the Signature one, so if you do have this, it's a really good option if you're not interested in the Signature one, as it increases the wearer's crit damage by 20%, and for every debuff on the enemy target, the wearer's crit damage dealt against this target additionally increases by 8%, stacking up to 3 times. When using ultimate to attack the enemy target, the wearer receives the Disputation effect, which increases damage dealt by 36%, and enables their follow-up attacks to ignore 24% of the target's defense, lasting for 2 turns. So getting a very nice 20% increase to crit damage for free is nice, and if you are running around a follow-up attack team, or just a debuff team, this second part of having 3 debuffs on the enemy is very easy to get that 24 extra crit damage you can get up to attack in that target. And on top of that, using your ultimate, you get a 36% damage increase, which is going to be really nice, and enables follow-up attacks to ignore 24% of the target's defense. As you do remember, her ultimate is also considered a follow-up attack, so this part is going to be active for that as well, and making this really powerful because you are also getting a 20% defense ignore. Which isn't as much as the signature, but as this one does provide you damage dealt and crit damage, it makes it almost as good as the signature is, making it a really, really good second option. Another really good option is Topaz's signature light gun, as it increases the wear's crit rate by 18% and increases damage dealt by the follow up attack by 30%. And when the wearer uses a follow up attack, inflicts the target with the tamed state, stacking up to two times. And anytime someone hits the enemies under the tamed state, each tamed stack will increase crit damage dealt by 12%. So this is really nice as you are getting an increase to crit rate even more than the actual signature by 3%. You also get an increase for follow up attack damage by 30% so this is a nice portion for her own damage. And this second part does also affect her because you are attacking enemies taking more crit damage. But on top of benefiting her making enemies take more crit damage, your other teammates will also deal that additional crit damage though. So this one is a nice option for her own damage and is also really good for her team. Making this light cone a very powerful option as well. And what it does is for each time the wearer hits the same target, damage increases by 16%, stacking up to 5 times, and is dispelled when the wearer changes targets. As Feisha hits a lot, especially in her ultimate, it is extremely easy to stack this up because every hit you do is going to do more damage, especially in the ultimate. So you're able to rev this up and get a very big increase to damage dealt at the end. And as Feisha is a single target character, she is easily able to focus building up the stacks of this light gun. And when you switch targets, inevitably, you can still stack it up pretty easily, making this a really good option as well. Another really solid free to play option is the free to play Herder Shop light cone, as it increases the wearer's crit rate by 16% and increases crit rate against enemies with HP percentages less than or equal to 50% by an extra 16%. When the wearer defeats an enemy, their attack is increased by 40% for 2 turns. So the 16% crit rate is, as I already mentioned, very, very good, as crit rate is very, very crucial on Beisha. And on top of that, when you do fight an enemy with 50% or lower HP, you get an extra 16%, giving you 32% crit rate, which is very 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 good and when you are able to defeat an enemy with Feisha which is going to be really easy the light cone performance does fall off if you do not have the second part because the 40% attack is very helpful but for the 60% crit rate it's nice and then also the additional when you can get it 32% is really good and as Feisha is mainly a nuker it is really easy to defeat at least a single enemy pretty quickly to get the 40% attack increase so this is another good option you can use there are two more iffy options you can actually use if you do not have any of the ones mentioned one of them is a Zele signature light gun, as it increases the wearer's crit rate by 18%, and while the wearer is in battle, for every 10 speed that exceeds 100, increases damage dealt by basic attack and skill by 6%. At the same time, increases the crit damage by the ultimate by 12%, and the effect can be stacked up to 6 times. The reason I say this is iffy is because Feisha can be built as a slow character or a fast character. So if you are using this light gun, you are going to be forced to build her as a fast character because you are going to be wasting a bunch of stats this thing can give, and some people might not want to do that. But for the reason 
reasons this Lycone can be good is mainly for the fact it gives you a good amount of crit rate, a whole 18%, which once again is higher than the signature, and mainly for the last part of the Lycone that increases the crit damage dealt by the ultimate by 12%. Stacking up to 6 times means you need a total of 160 speed, while even if you can't get that while building a fast phase shout, you can still get a good amount of numbers with this even if you have something like 140 or 150. But the reason it is iffy is because mainly for the fact that this part right here of the increased basic tech and skill, she does a basic tech so that doesn't matter. But the skill part, her main damage is not really from basic attacks or skill. Even when you do use a skill, spam it, you don't really get much damage from it. The small source of damage you get is from the follow-up attack, and then the big, big source of her and her whole playstyle is around the ultimate, making this part effectively kind of useless. Again, you do use the skill pretty often, so that part is just a little nice increase, but not too crazy. And the ultimate part is very helpful, but once again, it will pretty much force you to do a fast phase shout, and if you do a slow one, this Lycan performance falls off a lot. And then the last one is the only silence for mains Lycone, as it increases wearer's attack by 32% at S5, and if there's two or fewer enemies on the field, increases the wearer's crit rate by 24%. So this one is good if you do have two or fewer enemies on the field, because 24% crit rate on top of that 32% attack is good. Otherwise, it just kind of becomes a 32% attack increase, which you can just get better Lycones, such as using the free Herder Shop one. And if you take this to a battle that does not have two or fewer enemies, so something like 5 plus, or somewhere else that might have enemies spammed at you, then this one will perform a lot worse. So this is more of a Lycone that you can sub out if you don't have a better version of the other ones, or you might have a low refinement one and then a good refinement one of this one. And then you take her into a battle that might be able to at least kill the enemies on the side quickly so you can get the second part of the Lycone's effect. Or if the battle just innate has two or less enemies, then it could be a good option, but otherwise it's not too powerful. Now for the best relic options you can use for phase shout, the overall best one you can use is 4-piece of the Wind Soaring set, as the 2-piece increases attack by 12% and the 4-piece increases the wearer's crit rate by 6%. When the wearer uses a follow-up attack, increases the damage dealt by their ultimate by 36% for one turn. As the actual source of the follow-up attack isn't mainly the source of damage and it is their ultimate, you can use that to increase the damage dealt by our ultimate, making very very effective use of this relic set. The 2-piece also giving attack percent and then the 4-piece giving the extra 6% crit rate is also helpful, but mainly for the fact you can get a 36% increase to the ultimate damage, which is really good making this her best set. Another really good set which is almost as good as the Wind Soaring set is the 4-piece of the Duke set, which the 2-piece increases follow-up damage by 20%, and the 4-piece, when the wearer uses a follow-up attack against the target enemy, increases the wearer's attack by 6% for every time the follow-up attack deals damage. This effect can stack up to a maximum of 8 times and lasts for 3 turns, and is removed the next time the wearer uses a follow-up attack. Very very helpful, especially since her ultimate is considered a follow-up attack, and you can very much easily stack up the full attack percent thanks to the fact that her ultimate hits a bunch of times, and you can almost stack up the 4-piece thanks to the fact her ultimate hits a bunch of times, giving you a very big increase to attack percent as well, and so getting that during that attack is very good. So you can do that. And the other options is mainly taking the 2-piece of the Duke set and doing 2-piece of the Eagle set as the Eagle set increases wind damage by 10%. So you'd be having 2-piece increasing follow-up damage and then a 2-piece increasing wind damage as her damage is wind damage. So you can also do that. Or you could take one of those 2 pieces and do 2-piece of the debuff set as the 2-piece of the debuff set increases damage dealt to enemies with a debuff by 12%. You would need another character to apply a debuff to use that, but if you do, which for the most part you will on our teams, you're able to combine one of those two sets with the 2-piece debuff set. For our planner ornaments, the best one is going to be the Durin set, which when allies use a follow-up attack, the wearer receives a stack of merit stacking up to 5 times, and every stack of merit increases the damage dealt by the wearer's follow-up attacks by 5%, and once you do have 5 stacks, additionally increases the wearer's crit damage by 25%. This one takes a bit to actually stack up, but with a follow-up team and phase shell especially, it is extremely quick to stack up this ornament. And getting 25% increase to follow-up damage and a 25% increase to crit damage is very very good. It does state when allies use a follow-up attack, but it does not state that this also does apply to Fei Shao herself or the wearer themselves, so Fei Shao using it also does count as a stack. But if you don't want to actually have that stack up, another really good option is Inner Sosoto, which increases the wearer's crit rate by 8%, and when the wearer's crit rate reaches 50% or higher, the wearer's ultimate and follow-up damage increases by 15%. So she's able to benefit both because she does do ultimate damage and follow-up damage, so getting the increase by 50% is good, especially for also getting the 8% crit rate. And this one does not have any restrictions, so you just have 
the buff right away and good to go. It does fall behind Durn when Durn is fully stacked, but if you don't want to deal with the stacking up in the beginning of the battle, then you can just use Inno's Assault. And another option is the Izumosa, which increases the wear's attack by 12%, and when you enter the battle, if there's one other ally that follows the same path as the wear, the wear's crit rate increases by 12%. For the most part, you will be running Beisha with another hunt character, be it mainly Topaz or Moe's, and also Hunter Bard 7th. If you are taking one of them and you might have a good Yzmo pieces, you can just use Yzmo Honor because it works well, getting the extra crit rate and also getting the extra attack percent. Both are nice, but again, it requires another ally to be a part of the same path, which again, with Face Out, is very easy and for the most part, you always will. Now these next two are sort of specific if you are doing a speed face out. If you are doing a speed face out, which will have a good amount of speed, you can also use Glamoth Ornament, which increases attack by 12%. And when the wear speed is equal to or higher than 135 slash 160, the wear deals 12% slash 18% more damage. So this would require you to at least get 135 speed or higher, which with a speed face out, it's very easy to do because all you need is speed boots. So you can at least get the 12% damage increase. And depending on the team, you could eventually push that to 160, especially with good speed rolls. And that makes this set very viable with a fast face out. But once again, it only applies to a fast face out. And then this one requires less of a fast face out, but still does require some speed and that is space ceiling station this one is easily the worst option out of all of them but is still usable if you are farming for another one but space ceiling station increases the wear's attack by 12 percent and when the wear's speed reaches 120 or higher the wear's attack increases by an extra 12 percent so if you have good spacing station pieces while you do farm for one of the other ones, you can use it, but that will require you to at least hit 120 speed, which is just a few substat rolls, at least thanks to Feisha's very high speed of 112. You just need a few rolls, or if you're using speed boots, then you can easily eclipse the amount you need. But once again, this would mainly apply to people that have enough rolls, and you are just kind of using it to farm another ornament, at least until you get the other ornament set. Now for the main stats on the relics. For the body, you want to do crit rate or crit damage corresponding to which one you need more, but for the most part you will be doing crit rate because Faisha has a lot of hits and you need them to crit. So gaining a very high amount of crit rate up to 90% or 80% if on the lower side is very much recommended. Even if you do have low crit damage, you want your face shot to be consistent. So crit rate is most likely going to burn. But if you have really, really good rolls of crit rate, then you can just use crit damage for a nice damage increase. For the feet, this one depends on you. If you want to do a fast face shot, you can use speed. Otherwise, if you want to mainly rely on teammates gaining her ultimate stacks, then you can use attack percent for more damage. Faisha is able to generate her stacks for her sub as a speed build pretty pretty well, but overall her teammates will do most of the work to generate her stacks, especially if you do have something like E2. So you are able to use attack percent for your teammates to generate you the more stacks instead, so having faster teammates is very beneficial. But if you want to build a fast face out so she can also help benefit stacks building on her own and also refresh her follow-up attack more, then you can also do that and that is completely fine. For the orb, you want to have wind damage percent. You can also use attack percent. Wind damage is a bit better, but if you have a good attack percent orb, you can do that. And for the link rope, you want attack percent. For your substats, it's just your regular DPS stuff, so crit rate, crit damage. Getting a lot of crit rate will help. If you're a fast and you want a fast face out, you can get more speed. If you're not, then you don't really hit the word of speed at all. Getting some rolls can help, but you don't really need it. But morally, attack percent and also some break effect can help. So again, morally, just crit rate, crit damage. Once again, if you're speed, you want to have more speed rolls. Even if you're doing attack percent boots and you have a slower one, some speed rolls can help, but it is not required. And attack percent break effect is also very helpful. Now talking about the team and team ideas for face out. So her best team and the team ideas you want to do is run her with other full up characters because that's where she will perform the best. And so the best team you can do for Fei Shao is Fei Shao herself, Topaz, the sustained slot would be Aventurian, and then the best harmony support is Robin. This is the best team you can do for Fei Shao thanks to Topaz's debuffs of increasing follow up damage. Aventurian is the best follow up sustain and also having a follow up attack of his own. Also being able to make enemies take increased crit damage. And Robin is the best harmony support for follow up attack teams and also just being really good in general. But there are options you can do to replace these guys here. With Topaz, we did just get the new 4 star character Moe's and he is a very very powerful substitute you can use. Especially if you do have him E2, if you have him E2, his debuff also gains a crit damage dealt multiplier, so that can make Fisha do even more damage, but even if you don't have him E2, he is a very, very good option you can use. 
Another good substitute for him if you don't have him and you maybe just don't want to use him is the new Hunt March 7th as she also provides very nice buffs and is a very nice sub DPS as well. So she is another good option you can use. For the sustain slot, another really good sustain you can actually use for Bitch out herself is Gallagher. Gallagher works perfectly fine as he's also able to get a bunch of attacks off in order to also build up Beisha. He doesn't have a follow-up attack but he's able to actually advance his self for another turn and also be built with really good speed. Another good option you can actually use is Fushuan but the only issue is Fushuan doesn't have many attacks so it's not like you're getting an action forward to get another attack like Gallagher or a Venturian who's able to sustain you a lot better and on top of that do a follow-up attack to stack up Beisha even faster. But as she does have nice us in her own skill, giving crit rate and max HP, she is also an option you can use. If you do not actually own Robin, you can also use one of the action forward buffers. So Bronia, she works fine, but this team is going to be very, very skill point hungry because you want to spam skill with Feisha. And when it is Bronia's turn, you use her skill to give it to Feisha, who's going to use that for another skill. You're going to have to manage SP on this team when you are running these two characters. It's going to be difficult, but it can work. But another option you can use, which is the better option, is Sparkle. Sparkle doesn't have a full turn, so with a hyper carry speed Feisha, it might be a bit difficult but if you're running a slow fish out it becomes really really good Sparkle's single target crit damage buff is very very nice and on top of that she gives a bunch of skill points and overcap skill points so she can help a lot and that will allow you to safely spam the skill with fish out and then whenever you need to use it with other characters so if you have Moe's you could not really need to use skill too much with him with March you don't have to with Topaz if you're switching targets it's going to be helpful with Fushuan or Aventurin you don't have to too much actually with Aventurin you probably do a few times at least since you will have to refresh the shield, but if you do have an E1 of insurance, you can have the ultimate do that so you don't have to worry about that. So Sparkle will practically eliminate any potential skill point issues you may have. And yep, that is the build guide for Feisha. Let me know how you guys are going to be building her. If you guys did summon, hope your summons went well. That's all I gotta say. Hope you found the video helpful. Peace out.